This is Business Connect, and today our discussion is on the timeless topic of branding. In making buying decisions, customers usually have so many options to choose from. As such, for a business owner, one of the greatest goals should be differentiation. How do you make your product or service appear and indeed be unique in a market where there are so many options to choose from? It has to be a function of branding. How do you create your own brand? My name is Brian Oji, and today I'll be presenting this show to you and I have a special guest that will be discussing this special topic with me. We're going to be finding out how can you be distinct? How can you create a specialness for your product? We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Now, my special guest on the show today is easily one of the biggest names in branding here in Nigeria and in most parts of Africa. He is the principal consultant of Adstrad Brand Management Consortium. He is a highly intelligent strategist who has worked with some of the world's greatest brands. He's worked with Standard Bank, Polo, and Visa International. He's also the brain behind the brand Arise, with, with which he stimulates revolutionary thinking in individuals that is capable of birthing social change. So much to say about this man. Mr. Charles Sotudo, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure is mine. It's, it's, it's exciting to have you on set and we're going to be talking today about branding. You, you, you are the boss of branding. Well, <laughs> I would not say that. Uh, I would just say I've just been opportuned um, to be on the turf when it was time to create the impossible. It's important. Mm. You can't be a boss of, an, of a discipline when you're alive. Exactly. It's only after you die that the world will be able to judge the quality of your work, not in your lifetime. Oh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to get into it right now. Now, as an entrepreneur, at what point do I get concerned about branding? After I've developed a product that is in the market and I'm trying to differentiate it, or ever before I create a product? I think the first step before you even do that is at the beginning. Um, when you have that thought, most of the brands you see today, uh, they put the the branding at the last point when they put in place all the, the infrastructure, the business plans and everything else. But in real sense, you actually need a brand consultant to work with you from the point of the idea, mm. through the idea, through the, the processes, to the point when you now start designing the product itself. That way you, you are not just developing a, a product, but you're also developing a brand, which is long term. Yes. Now, don't forget, the product belongs to who? The market, the Ex customers. No, the product belongs to the manufacturer. Okay, the manufacturer. The brand belongs to the consumer. Oh, 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 true that. Because okay. they determine which of the products to buy. But, but let, let, let's even just, let's, let's okay. put it in the context. Let's even yeah. define mm -hmm. what branding is. I try to avoid that question, but I'll answer it in a different format. Okay. A brand is a storehouse of trust. Hmm. It's a storehouse of trust. So what does that mean? That means that you pick in the, in the, amongst different products in the market. There's a reason why you buy the one you buy, because you trust that product. That becomes, that's when it becomes a brand. Now, the content is the product. The emotional intrinsic values are what you get that makes it the brand that you, you purchase. Now, the difference is that the branding itself is the art and science of creating that which, at the point of purchase, determines your spend. I'll give you an instance. You go to the supermarket, for instance, the, um, the household goods area. Let's take toothpaste, for instance. Okay. At a point when you go to the supermarket, they are all the same colors, red and blue and white. Exactly. For many years, until we now stay having pure red at a point, now we have the green variants. Yes. Now, at a point you get to that stage when you want to purchase. There's confusion because it's all, they all look alike. Now, what matters at the point you're about to make your purchase is top of the mind recall. That's a battle that you can never ever win as a manufacturer except you can create top of the mind recall because you're not there to tell the, the, the consumer what to purchase. Yeah. Now, that end point is the act that translates into the purchasing decision. Okay. So it's the art and science of creating Converting products into brands in the psyche of the target consumers. That's the art of branding. So will you say branding is inside the mind as against on the physical product? Of course. You see, there are two aspects of it. Okay. The physical aspect is the, create, the, the content, the packaging and everything else. All that all series of 
processes. But the real purchase, the real brand is actually in the psyche of the consumer because they determine where they spend. I'll give you an instance. When you want to buy a very strong car, yes. if you close your eyes, there's a name that will come to your mind. When you want to buy a comfortable car with performance, you don't need to ask. It's already in your mind. Yes. Now, there's certain shops you go into. You don't ask if the car's there. They have ACs. <laughs> it's, already in, it's already part of the brand definition mm -hmm. that's associated with that brand. So that's the, at the end of the day, you find out that it's the consumers. It's top of mind recall that actually determines the strength of brands. Okay, now, I would like to create a brand mm. for my business. Mm -hmm. An entrepreneur watching me, yeah. I was thinking. What are like the pillars? Are there pillars mm. on which every branding goal mm. is built? Discipline. First of all, you need to start, let's start from the point A. What product are you, why are you, well, first of all, what, what sector do you want to go into? Do you want to go into manufacturing okay. or you want to go into retail, whatever. Once you determine that, you need to work with your, your consultant to now help you put together this, this series of nuggets. One, what's the mission statement? What's the vision statement? What would drive this business? When you put that together, you have your business plan. Your business plan is done. You have your brand identity produced. What, can, what name would drive your brand? What, how would you, what do you want to represent? Is, is that the brand, brand identity? No, no, no. A brand identity, okay. yes, that's, it's all part of it. Okay. What's the name? Who are you targeting? Your, your logos? All those elements are put together. You now have your brand identity, the manual now. Now your brand manual defines what you, that brand is about. Your brand language, your brand colors, your brand etiquette, the totality is in that brand manner. That also def de defines your, the totality of the brand. Once that is ready, it's, it's very, very critical at this point. If you can define that, you have resolved about 50% of your, 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 the issues. The, the, ex the other part now is just getting your funding. Now, if you take a document that is that structured to a bank, for instance, if you put that kind of effort together, there's no bank that will not look at your document twice because they, they see an effort has been disciplined because it's a total document that is not just about the business plan, it's a totality. Now, when you have that all put together, mm -hmm. the critical aspect becomes the brand discipline. Okay. You must have, the, most of the, if you want to create a brand that's compelling long term, you must be disciplined enough to stick to the brand identity, the brand behavior, the brand language, the totality. It's critical you have the discipline. Because without the discipline, you have a distorted brand. Does brand discipline therefore means, mean sticking to what we said our brand should be? Is yes. That like I decide my brand should be perceived in this way and I must do that. But exactly. For instance, I, I, met, I met somebody in the course of doing business who always sends out his letters mm -hmm. in a particular way. It must go in that way. Now you're talking. It, I'll give you an instance. Our letters are never folded. That's an abstract. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's our, in our brand manual. Our letters are straight up. We don't use the small envelopes. We use A for official envelopes to send our letters. And our letters are facing, they face this way. So when you open up the envelope, if you, you bring it out, up. it's facing you mm -hmm. with our letterhead. That's brand recognition. That's ours. And something as basic as that. Oh, it's very critical. Now, it's easy for business owners to overlook such things. Now, okay. how can you, how, do you how, how did you think that this was important? And what kind of victories have you won as a result of doing things okay, first so of meticulously? All, within three years, we started working with the biggest brands in the market. Hmm. Um, because, I give an instance, it was one of the banks that um, doing the public offers, uh, post pre-consolidation. Um, we're working for a bank, another bank came in, and his sister should drop the other bank. And we said, no, you have to wait. Now, they had already paid somebody to start the process. Yes. But based on the strength of our, the totality of our brand, not just the strategy itself, but the consistency of our thought, yes. consistency in our appearance, consistency and discipline in our approach, they, they employed us and the bank waited for us to finish the other project. 
and we, we executed that project. Wow. We've gone to presentations where we are called in and we do not present cost strategy. We only present past case studies and insist for you to work with us, this is what we earn as consulting and you, we need 50% paid off from before we present to you cost strategy. And most of the clients paid. Wow. Is that not because you had made your name already? And no, 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 no. This even started as at one where three, four years. It was tough. But we're disciplined, we're consistent. At a point, we stopped working for, for certain clients we already started working for. But we explained to them that we are, we are evolving mm. to something else. And our modalities are, are changing. And we told them we will not work. For five months, we didn't get a new client. Wow. And you stuck with what you decided we refused. to do. We said this is the way. Because if you do not get to a point when you define your business processes based on discipline, you work for every brand and the whole market. You, can't be able, you won't be able to get to a point where you can define a market. You must be able to define a market. For instance, I, 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 you want to work, as, assuming now, you, you, you want to sell bread. Yes. The average, maybe 120, 250 a loaf of bread now. Mm -hmm. Do you know you can bring in a bread, I mean, you, your product now, and you sell it for 450 naira, people will still buy it? Yes. Even 500 naira. Do you agree? I, I, it's possible, but how? How? It's the totality. My bread to that differentiation, brand, difference, brand differentiation, mm -hmm. the brand values. You need mm -hmm. to look at the market. What is the market offering? What are you going to add to your product that would. Do you know people are looking for bread with real honey? Are you aware? Well, Bromate free, for I'm instance. Sure. I know about that. Different variants. Now, there's a way you mix your honey mm -hmm. with the milk and the other elements that what you, the flavor is a bit different. People will pay for it. Not real sugar, but honey. Mm -hmm. Those especially those with diabetes and issues like that. Now, also the packaging also matters. The positioning. Who remembers Wonderloaf? Wonderloaf. Yes. How many there, years ago was that? There was a period when Daily Momoto was selling bread. <laughs> Daily Momoto started okay. selling bread. People were buying that bread. At then, normal loaves were selling for 200, 150 or 120. His bread was selling for 250 at, at different points in Lagos. They had stands. People were rushing the bread. You need to taste it. But they sold. Now, one of the things that we find mm -hmm. in, uh, in economies is that you have people who try to repackage the same thing and sell yeah. it at a premium. Mm. Now, from what, what I'm hearing you say, yes, yep. you can sell your product at a premium, yeah. but it has to be very unique. Extremely unique, and it starts with the brand itself. The, 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 it's not just position, it's not externalities. It starts with the product. What will be the makeup of that product? It's the makeup that will determine the quality and the premium value that will be placed. Once the, you can't sell a brand product twice. So if, no matter how the amount of packaging and positioning, I buy the first time, it doesn't meet my standards, I will never come back. Mm. And the manufacturer will not be there to defend himself. Exactly. And I become a bad advertisement, moving advertisement for a bad product. You want to buy bread, don't buy that bread. Mm -hmm. Without knowing it, that market gets, you get your market share eroded gradually. Now, I think it's very, very critical for entrepreneurs to understand you can create a successful brand from scratch, yes. but you need discipline. But you also need to understand that you cannot be jack of all trades. You can't be the man that writes the business plan. You can't be the one that has the vision and the dream. You need, at a point, you need to get somebody else to help you to nurture that vision together as, your, as a partner, not internal partner or a shareholder, for, but a partner that understands your vision, that will work with you, that will become your chief whip. Hmm. No, no. This is the way, and you just stick to it. And if your brand has those elements, you talk about SMEs, small, medium scale enterprises, you know, within two, three years, if you are disciplined and you have the right business plan, you will succeed. Hmm. But you need to have the right mix. The mix of, mix of what? What's, the what's product, inside the mix? <laughs> the product? Yeah. You have to have the right pricing. Okay. Those are, those are the different those are, yeah. You mean product the price, piece. promotion, and, position, and, and place. Uh, placement? That's a, different, that's a different discussion again. But okay. the most important aspect is getting the brand right from the, the onset. Your business plan, your brand identity, your brand manual, the etic, man, etiquette, and all that put together. With that, and you have to understand the principles of how you want to sell. 
Who are you talking to? Have you defined your segment, your market segment? Do you understand the, the psychographics, the demographics? So many of entrepreneurs go into the market with their eyes closed, blind feet. It doesn't work anymore. Mm. You need to understand the psychology of the consumers. What are they looking for? Mm. Understanding the psychology, psychology of, of the consumers. consumers. And you cannot be all things to all men. So, so does that mean that I cannot create a brand in isolation? No way. My branding must first come from an understanding of the needs of a consumer? Yes. Well, well, who else are you selling to? <laughs> if you don't understand the needs of the market, you are selling to yourself. You are you're only producing for yourself. Who's going to buy it? For instance, I noticed these days, um, the, this twin gum, I don't mention the name, those ones, the imported ones, those strips, they used to come in packs of like 10 or 7. Yes. Now you have them, they, they, they sell them in small stops now at 50 50 naira. They're retailing packs. They're now, they big, I mean, just, just to tell you how the market has become so eroded. Mm. Now, you, a lot of people are not buying them in packs. So they can, they're now making them available for you to buy just one off. Mm -hmm. Now, that tells you, with me, we're discussing ice cream yes, today, yes. how it, the, the market has changed. And, and they're doing that because of the way Nigerians buy. And the choices, Nigerians now have different choices. They have options. You, you cannot be a king in the market and remain a king forever. Mm. You don't take your consumers for granted. Once in love with a product does not mean you'll you be in love forever. You need to continue to renew the romance between mm -hmm. your brand, your product, and the consumers. All right. On that <laughs> thought, right now, we're going to take a break. You need to continue to renew the romance between your product, your brand, and your consumers. When we come back, we'll be talking about what are you going to do if your brand is out, gone, dead? Mm. How are you going to get it back to life? We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Lovo Plus is now on your mobile format and connects you in real time. You can now watch your favorite programs, episodes, live shows, prayer shows, features, live TV, archive videos, and lots more. You can also participate with your comments and contributions from anywhere in the world. Download on any of your mobile device, whether it's Android or iOS or Windows, the Lovo Plus mobile app now and stay connected. Lovo Plus, totally you. Welcome back. We're still talking with our special guest, Mr. Charles Otudo, and we're discussing branding. Now, if a brand happens to be dysfunctional, okay. out, not as great as it was, uh -huh. customers are not buying as much yeah. as they used to, the brand is going. Okay. What can I do to resuscitate a, a brand? The first step will, put to, will be to uh, so put together what we'll call the health check. Um, the health check, you have to work on that with your brand consultant. You need to find out what went wrong. Um, it's not just about the consumer not buying. There's something wrong with the product. It's either the packaging is, is there's something wrong somewhere. So you need to find out what went wrong. Um, and then when you find out, based on the health check, you put in place certain modalities. One, if based on the, 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 your findings, is it the pricing? Is it the quality of the content because of a new entrant into the market that provides same, um, yes. um, same. Se service, but at the same time they've added this, there's a new flavor. Or, or at a cheaper cost. At a cheaper cost. Yes. Now, or maybe um, your distribution network is very poor. Mm -hmm. So the brand health check will, will help to ascertain what really went wrong. Now, once that is done, Simple, you get to work. One, you need to, first of all, understand that the, the consumers are not buying. That's one. So you must get them to fall in love again. So it's called brand engagement. At this point, you need to put together, first of all, you have to, don't forget, if, based on research, what is wrong? It might be in-house. Mm -hmm. It might be the marketing strategy. It might be distribution strategy. It might, whatever it is, you fix in-house first. You don't take a, you don't go to the market yet. Mm -hmm. You fix the house. Something went wrong internally, you restructure internally. If it's a marketing strategy, that means someone is doing the wrong things at the top. Maybe the marketing director, the head of strategy, whatever, you fix it quickly. And I mean, most of the global brands today, the CEO takes charge. Yes. He becomes the C chief marketing officer of the brand, mm -hmm. so he can hire and fire. So he looks at it, he has a vision, he goes back to retool to this war zone. He now decides at this point, 
this, this, this will not function with my new vision. Out. He gets the right team in place, puts together a strategy with his team, and then hits the market again. At this point, your house is in order. Mm -hmm. It's now easier with the right team to now try to get the, the consumers to fall in love. So you take your strategy from inside, you now start what we call the brand engagement. How do we engage? And don't forget, that's also based on the psychographics and demographics. Who are your consumers? Where are they going to be at a certain time? Yeah. What do they love to do? What are the new things happening in that market? Yes. The new, you know, so you, if based on your psychographics and your demographics, you create your strategy and you start executing them based on a strict document and you stick to it. Now, you will not have the miracles. This, one, this is critical, I say this. Okay. A lot of uh, clients expect to see miracles in one month. Yes. You did not get your problem in one month. It took years, and it, you didn't, just that you didn't notice. It keeps eroding gradually. Mm. So you don't expect miracles to happen, but you see a very clear um, improvement within three, three to six months. Most clients want one month now. No, 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 no. With three months, within the first quarter, definitely you see an improvement. Mm -hmm. Six months, definitely, you see a great improvement. One year, you start consolidating a big chunk of your market back. One year and a half, don't forget, you need to now change your strategy. At the point you consolidate, you don't use that same strategy anymore. Okay. Because at this point, your competition has learned what you did. Now, they are watching you and they're trying to mm -hmm. beat you to your game. So you re-strategize. It's a continuum. That just goes into my next question, which is, is uh, branding, does it, does it ever stop? Do you just create the brand and say, we're going to stick with this? Or is it continually evolving? Strategy is continuum. Strategy, the new economy of today, tells us that you cannot sit on your oars. You start a strategy, I mean, you start this on point A, you get to Z, point F, E, D, you pause. You need to understand the, the mechanisms. The, there's a point you pause your brand. There's a point, there's a point you, 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 you fast forward. There's a point you now totally stop, reevaluate, And then you now investigate what your competition is also doing. You need to put together a, a research R&D department that does that for you. You need to understand exactly what they're doing. Based on your findings, you go back to the, market, the, the drawing board. Mm. So your next, your next action again takes you to the next level in the market. You can never remain the same all the time. But, but don't I stand the risk of always changing? No, you're not changing. Don't forget. No. You're not changing. Okay. You're taking your strategy to the next level. For instance, if you engage the consumer six months ago in a, in a certain way, you're still going to talk to the same consumers, but you must add some spice. There must be something new. Okay. You, that doesn't mean... That, I didn't say you should stop. You should change your strategy. You, should, you, should you just stop. reinforce. Okay. It's reinforcing your strategy and going to the next level. But you don't stop. And for branding, you, there's never a time you stop. You keep on having your health checks. You keep, it's a continuum. Except you want to bury your brand finally. You don't go to, this, go, to, go to the cooler. Any pointers of how frequently a brand should do a health check? Every, every six months. Okay. I would recommend every quarter. Oh. Especially for um, consumer goods, FCMG, FMCGs, yes. fast moving consumer goods. You need to do a health check every quarter. You need to, have, you need to be able to know what's going on. And you must also understand what the commission is doing. You must be able to know what's happening on the other side of the fence. Okay. Yeah. Now, let us get into um, the last part of this program today, where we're going to be talking about the do's and mm -hmm. don'ts yeah. of branding. I mean, we've touched on them mm -hmm. severally in the course mm -hmm. of our discussion. But if we're going to say there are things that are complete no-no mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when it comes to building a formidable brand, mm -hmm. what would they be? One. The, cons the customer is king. Don't ever take your customer for granted. No matter the product or service you are involved in, the customer is king. Don't ever, ever take the customer for granted. That's number one. Two, you, you must have integrity. Your yes is your yes, and your no is your no. Three, I guess those are still the do's, the, yeah. the don'ts. I'll, I'll finish with the do, don'ts. Okay. Um, integrity is very critical in business. Um, when it, when you, you, are, you fall short of a promise, it's critical. Most brands, they don't apologize. The customer needs to have empathy. You need to create what we call the empathy for the customer. If there's a gap in your service, most brands you see today are like donuts. Heavy on the outside, whole on the inside. Mm -hmm. You must have a tradition of saying, we 
are sorry. Oh, but then, but then a CEO will argue with you that mm -hmm. there was a mistake. Mm -hmm. It wasn't very popular. Mm -hmm. Then we apologized, mm -hmm. and it, it was blown out of proportion. Don't forget, you're not talking to the whole market. You're talking to a particular customer that came in, okay. maybe bought your product, okay. and found something wrong in it. And it petitions, maybe writes a letter. Okay. I've seen brands that just ignore you. Mm. And they lose a lot. So it's all part of what I said the first time. Don't ever take your customers, your consumers for granted. Now, the dues. Discipline is critical. Yes. Brand discipline is very critical. Under the discipline also brings quality control. The quality of the product must be consistent. Mm -hmm. The quality of the service must be consistent. Customers are paying for consistency. Don't forget I said a brand is a storehouse of trust. Mm -hmm. So they trust you. Yeah. So when they purchase that thing from you, mm -hmm. they go to sleep because it is Brian. Mm -hmm. there, there was a time my clients, when they see anything from us, they'll call me. They, they, they were one or two times Mr. Charles did not see this work. <laughs> yes. Mr. Charles didn't see this work. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I did see it. He said, no, you did not see it. Okay, and I said, well, I saw it by email. <laughs> he said, you didn't see this one. Because they were sure of the quality that should come. The finishing. If it came from you. Yes, because every, that, at a point, I am the final sign-off on every document that goes out. So it goes through all the processes, it must get through me. I don't know if I'm officer or not, I, I look at my, at times you just, you just in a hurry, let it go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a deadline to meet. I learned one of the biggest lessons, never let any document go out without being thorough. Mm. Because that's a promise. They come to the brand because of the discipline, the quality, the content that they always get. Mm -hmm. Now, and I've, I also learned to say sorry, I'm sorry. Give me 40 minutes, you get a document back. Okay. And, it, and I, be, I always beat my time. In 30 minutes, it, you'll get it. Okay. And I'll call you. Have you seen it, sir? I'm in a meeting. Okay, please check it, sir, when you have through. You said 40 minutes. I said, it's there now. Excellent. And that, that, was, that was a consciously created brand for your business. It's discipline. Uh, on this subject, I just want to ask a final question. Yeah. How do you, you as an entrepreneur, you've created a brand, mm -hmm. and, and like you said, sometimes letters go out and you're like, this, this mm -hmm. your, your customers give mm -hmm. you feedback, mm -hmm. this doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Not a letter, or, a creative document, creative. Okay, something goes yeah. out mm -hmm. and they say, this didn't, you didn't look mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So I've created a brand for myself. Mm -hmm. How do I make sure that the brand idea that I have permits mm -hmm. my entire system? It's, it's very, you can put in place that structure, but you need to continuously check it. As you expand, you bring in new spirits, new elements. They come from different backgrounds. Yes. You have the brand identity manual. You, you, no matter how much you train people, the number of times you correct them, you need to continuously put them back into the classroom again. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when you create a culture of excellence. It's a culture. So um, how do you do that? You need to work on it. You need to consistently put in place those training, those checks. Yes. You need to also engage a, a consulting firm to work with you to put together what we we'll call the brand etiquette manual. Okay. The do's and the don'ts, how we greet, how we write our letters, how we send documents out, how we conduct meetings, all that. How many seconds, how many hours after a brief comes in must we send a response? Mm -hmm. Whose role, whose responsibility is it? Who, all that is in the brand etiquette manual and every brand has a separate brand etiquette manual. It, it's not the same. It depends on the culture of the brand you're trying to develop. Yes. So, it's, and it's specific, it's, it's, it's bespoke. So, for Brian and TV Connect, or Connect TV, for Business instance. Business Connect. What? Business Connect. Business Connect, sorry. Business Connect, for instance, it's about connecting businesses. So, so opportunities and intelligent people just like you. So, now, based on that, that also determines it will drive the quality of the language, the quality of the content, and the, the quality of the people we will employ because yeah. of our intelligence. Mm -hmm. Creative intelligence. Mm. All right, you heard it. Creating a brand, there's a lot of work to be done, but then there's a lot to benefit from creating a proper brand. I'm sure you've heard so much on today's show. I want to thank my special guest for coming on the show. Thank you so much for sharing of your wisdom of over 15 years uh, in the practice, uh, running easily one of the most revolutionary branding companies in this country. Uh, thank you so much for coming Pleasure's on mine. the show. Um, that has been our show. Remember, you can watch this broadcast and previous editions of Business Connect on www.loveworldplus.org. 
as well as on our dedicated website, www.businessconnectonline.com. To interact with us via social media, go to our community on www.ucos.com. And the, the, the page is www.ucos.com slash groups slash business connect. I'll take it again. www.ucos.com slash groups slash business connect. And we will be glad to hear from you. We're going to be interacting on UCOS, um, and you can share your thoughts on branding, and we, we will continue the conversation right there. Thank you very much for coming on the show, and until we find time to meet again, keep winning. <laughs>